the real estate sector accounts for about 15% of the Chinese economy directly. And when you take into account the upstream as well as the downstream sectors, it accounts for about 30%. So if you, again, think about the overall goal of the Chinese government, they really do need the real estate sectors to stay healthy. Um, so, you know, consumption has definitely been hampered by COVID. Uh, and so that really leaves things like real estate as well as infrastructure spend, which we actually think will be very much front loaded in the first half of 2022 to ensure that the growth will remain healthy and stable. Uh Tracer, good morning to me joining in this conversation. You know, we had a guest earlier on yesterday, I believe, who said that um, growth in China has bottomed. Uh, you know, even though there is that narrative of a slowdown, uh, still very much uh, being uh, being the way things are ec economically for the region. I'm looking at your notes. You're talking about how real estate contributes about 15% to the uh, overall economy, 30% if you include, of course, the upstream, downstream manufacturing sectors like steel, cement, appliances, etc. That readjustment has that been factored in as the resizing happens in that sector? I think it has partially been um, factored in. There are many levers that the policymakers can pull in the Chinese economy to ensure that they can hit those numbers. And as I discussed, I do think that to give them a little bit more room to ensure that they do hit their growth targets, we do expect some front loading of infrastructure. Because that's the one thing that's within their sphere of influence, right? Things like exports is very much outside, i.e. it's much more dependent on things like global growth. A quick word on the currencies, um, Theresa. Sam mentioned uh, the yuan now trading uh, relatively strongly, uh, perhaps surprisingly strongly. How, how do you see policy on that? And do you think it might change after, after Chinese New Year? From a big picture perspective, we do see the Chinese government continuing on its path of a managed flow. That is, it's going to continue to manage its policy uh, to a trading basket of currencies of its biggest trading partners. Uh, if you look at the history, as you had already mentioned, the Chinese renminbi has been unusually strong last year. And as a result of that, uh, relative to its trading partners, the Chinese renminbi has actually appreciated quite considerably. So within the context of what we've just talked about, I think the biggest driver over the next six months will actually be the nominal interest rate differential between that of the United States and China. Specifically, as the Fed continues to hike interest rates and we see China lowering the interest rates, that gap's going to widen. And we actually, as a result, um, expect a mild depreciation of the renminbi relative to the dollar in the first half.